Well, good morning and welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder, and this is BRN AM for Friday, May 1st, 2020. And our top stories today, the Fed vows to keep lending support, and it's a tale of two workforces. Well, joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Devin Banerjee is the Senior Financial Services Editor for LinkedIn, and he's also the editor of the This Week in Finance newsletter, which you can find on the LinkedIn platform. Devin, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Jeff. It's always good to be with you. Well, it's great to have you on the program. Lots of news this week, and I know you wanted to start things off with a talk about the Federal Reserve and recent FOMC meeting. Yeah, Jeff, big week in the economy and uh, monetary policy. So let's go back to Wednesday. We had the official data release from the Commerce Department with uh, Q1 GDP, so that came in at a contraction, a negative 4.8%. Uh, that's a seasonally adjusted annualized rate. Uh, that's the first decline since 2014 and the steepest one since, of course, the fourth quarter of 2008, uh, sort of the, the, the depth of the last financial crisis and that recession. Also Wednesday this week, as you said, we had the FOMC minutes and press conference. It's kind of funny or intriguing. The Fed is back on its normal schedule, the schedule it sets out uh, at, at, at the top of the year. Um, all of the previous kind of emergency efforts we've seen over the past few months have been uh, outside, uh, uh, have been emergency meetings or announcements sure. made outside of their original schedule. So they're back on that schedule. Some takeaways there, of course, the benchmark rate remaining effectively at zero, it's that zero to 0.25% range. But really some kind of historic breathtaking comments from uh, Fed Chair Jay Powell about the Fed's role uh, in this crisis and what it kind of means for the Fed's role overall. Um, so some quotes from him, he said, we will not run out of money he said the Fed will forcefully and, and confidently support uh, financial conditions. Jay Powell even going so far as to urge Congress to use its fiscal measures uh, like never before without worrying about uh, deficit spending or long-term budget implications. I mean, these are comments you don't typically expect from the chair of the Fed. You know, as, as you know, Jeff, the Fed has a, a dual mandate price stability and full employment, which yes, are of course directly related to the, the actions it's taken, it's it's taken and is taking, but some of these comments really uh, put Jay Powell a, a bit out there on the spectrum uh, in, in, in terms of urging Congress what to do, et cetera. He, it, he, he, he even uh, came out and said, you know, that there are heartbreaking effects of this crisis. Um, an interesting quote from him is the, the burden is falling most heavily on those who are least able to carry that burden. So again, really extraordinary comments, and it goes uh, to show that basically the Fed will do whatever it takes. Uh, it's committing itself to ride out this crisis um, while spending basically whatever is necessary to uh, keep asset prices up and to keep pumping liquidity into the system. Two questions for you, Devin. The first is reaction from other central banks around the globe and also reaction to the comments that were, you know, normally he has measured comments, but comments on the platform, yeah. what were people reaction? Yeah, absolutely. So with, to, to your first question, of course, central banks around the world are taking these extraordinary measures and this sort of push and pull, I wouldn't call it a debate, but this push and pull with uh, what the role of a central bank typically is versus what central banks are doing now is happening uh, truthfully uh, around the world with other central banks on the European continent with the ECB, in the UK with the Bank of England, uh, really all around the world. Some interesting comments on, on the platform really going to what I was saying earlier, the unprecedented nature of, of what he's saying. Uh, Mike Creedon, a, a member on the platform we featured said, to quote the American war hero, General Patton, lead me, follow me, or get the hell out of my way. That's really what the Fed is, is saying here. They're, they're doing whatever it takes, and they're really stepping up their presence and their role, again, even suggesting what, uh, what Congress, uh, that branch of government, should do. Um, Mohamed El-Arian, the, the well-known economist who's quite active on LinkedIn, 
uh, really broke down, interestingly, why this press conference on Wednesday was really unique. He said Powell opened with a really, really well-crafted uh, statement and set of remarks aimed at both Main Street and Wall Street. He thinks Powell really balanced uh, those stakeholders well during that conference. Um, he said Powell maintained, you know, policy optionality. That the Fed has its 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 bond buying program that it has upsized during this crisis. It also it also has those nine lending facilities it's rolled out. So it's got a lot of optionality here. Uh, Powell saying all of those can be expanded, um, and uh, and Mohammed El Aaron really picking up on Powell's comments that he's in quote no hurry to move rates up. Um, and, and, and actually rates traders are effectively implying that the, that benchmark rate will remain near zero until late 2023 or early 2024. Really extraordinary time for, uh, for monetary policy right now. Uh, Devin, just last question, we got about a minute left in this segment. Uh, you know, call me an old fuddy-duddy, but uh, any comments about inflation or <laughs> deficit? I, you know, I mean, I just remember, you know, the so someone's got to pay the bills either today or in the future, you know, grandkids, great grandkids. Yeah, of course. That, that's that's where that? much of the debate, um, especially on our platform and also on other platforms like Twitter have been, uh, which is the question of inflation. You know, obviously the, the risk of this of, of this spending and pumping liquidity into the system is that inflation can can get out of control. Um, right now, that you know, of course, the, the data doesn't show that right now. But the question is, you know, that latency and when it comes, uh, mm -hmm. can we be quick enough to contain it? And then, it, yeah, in, in terms of uh, deficit spending, you know, it's we've brought out. Uh, you, you hear the phrase, you see it on social media that we're all MMTers now, uh, modern monetary theory, and that deficit uh, yeah. spending is 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 okay. It can be uncontrolled as long as GDP. Growth, long-term growth rate um, is is above, you know, our bills and the expansion of the of the debt. So again, you know, I, I personally don't have an opinion one way or or the other or a strong one, but it certainly is uh, something we 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 uh, need to keep an eye on. I will say, of course, this always bleeds into the political spectrum, <laughs> and people making the point that, um, you know, some parties, the Republican Party, I'll be specific, you know, cares about deficit spending. Um, in certain times and doesn't care about it in, in other times. And in this crisis period, when people are really hurting, you know, the, the argument is often made that now is the right time for, for, for deficit spending. And when, when times are good and, uh, you know, maybe that's when we have this debate, but not yeah. vice versa. So again, the debate's just all over the place right now. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Uh, must be fun to, uh, Look at them every day. I imagine you and the team have a lot of fun. Well, Devin, I want to go to a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to look at the LinkedIn workforce survey. It's a tale of two workforces. You're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network.
The windows on our homes, they protect us in the ones we love, but they do much more. At Renewal by Anderson, making your home more comfortable is at the center of every window we make. It's why we custom build our windows in America and install them in as little as one day. It's why we build our frames with exclusive Fibrex composite material that's two times stronger than vinyl. It's why our glass helps keep your home warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and quieter all year long. It's why we stand behind every window with a 20-year limited warranty. Why not help lower your energy costs while giving your home and family the best? Call 1-800-835-6525 to schedule a free in-home consultation. Buy one, get one at 40% off with this special offer. Plus, get special financing with no money down, no monthly payments, and no interest for one full year. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Call 1-800-835-6525 now. Welcome back. We're talking to Devin Banerjee, Senior Financial Services Editor for LinkedIn. Devin, thanks so much for sticking around with us this morning. Absolutely, Jeff. So we talked in the first segment about some of the comments around the FOMC meeting. Really interesting and a lot of feedback on the platform. Now let's talk about the LinkedIn workforce survey that you all are performing, I think, on a buy weekly basis, if I'm not mistaken, I know you'll correct me if I'm incorrect, but it really has now become a tale of two workforces. That's absolutely right, Jeff. So th these are the latest results of what we're calling our Workforce Confidence Index. It's a statistically robust survey that LinkedIn is conducting every two weeks, taking the pulse of workers' confidence about uh, their jobs, their personal financial situation, and their careers. So in the latest edition of our index, which we unveiled uh, just a few days ago this week, we're looking at the previous two weeks of data and we're seeing this divergence, as you said, a tale of two workforces. On one hand, you have the full-time employed Americans right now. They're holding pretty steady with their confidence over our previous index, the previous two weeks. Um, yes, of course, income and wages are a bit soft, Yes, they're cutting spending. Yes, they're seeing their retirement account balances fall, but their savings are ticking up a bit. And as I said, their, their confidence under those factors I just mentioned has remained steady uh, over the previous index. This is also the case with the unemployed. Now, of course, on an absolute basis, the unemployed are hurting the most during yeah. this crisis. Let's be clear about that. But they've been pretty steady in, unfortunately, how much they have been hurting. Where we're really seeing... Um, the, the erosion of confidence is with freelancers. So independent contractors, freelancers. So our, 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 our recent two weeks over the previous two weeks, we saw a 17 percentage point jump in those freelancers reporting a decrease in their retirement account balances, for example. And anecdotally, we're hearing them say they're dipping in, they have to dip in to their retirement savings right now. We're seeing a 13 percentage point jump just in the re re recent two weeks over the previous two weeks in freelancers reporting that they're decreasing their spending. Mm -hmm. um, a six percentage point jump in them saying that they're actually starting to uh, pay less toward their recurring debt obligations or their recurring obligations like rent, credit card debt, other loans. So we're seeing them really be the segment of the workforce by employment status that, that is, has been changed, has been affected, we think, the most dur during the course of this crisis. Um, and so we're, we're going to be diving deeper into this, getting freelancer stories firsthand on the platform, and I can bring that, I can bring that back to you next week. Yeah, I mean, I think, look, uh, early yesterday, we talked to Angela Antonelli from the Georgetown Center for Retirement Initiatives, and she commented about America's financial fragility. You know, with your uh, survey, do you correlate it, for example, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average or some of the market events and also some of it probably is related to the unemployment and, and just the overall yeah. consumer sentiment, I, I would think. I don't know how you calculate and what you plot it against, but that to me would be see, seem interesting. Yeah, no, certainly. Our, 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 confidence, our confidence measure is on a scale of uh, negative 100 <clears throat> to 100. And those full results, we, as I said, we published uh, uh, yesterday, on Thursday of this week, under uh, George Anders, my colleague's profile, we're publishing all the data from there. But yes, we are thinking about, uh, you, you know, uh, co-branding the index or aligning the index with, with some other third parties 
uh, and, and data providers, absolutely. Um, and, and we're not just looking at, uh, you know, a, a lot of what we, the storyline with freelancers this week was around their financial situation and their job security. As I said, we're also measuring um, confidence in people's careers, uh, across people's industries, yeah. across job functions. So some takeaways on those uh, factors this week, in terms of industries most confident, at the top we're seeing financial services, uh, construction, transportation and logistics. Mm -hmm. So these are a bit more resilient in this kind of crisis and a health pandemic. Um, uh, one of the biggest movers is the education industry, unfortunately, moving down in its confidence. Hmm. Uh, we think probably as school closures are being extended, as the strains and the challenges of virtual teaching, virtual learning are really becoming readily apparent. As I know you've talked about, you, you've talked with some great teachers about, about this topic. Yes. We are seeing some, some strain and stress on confidence of education professionals. And then at the bottom of that list by industry, we have, of course, recreation, travel, uh, media and communications, and entertainment. And then, as I said, we've also done this by job function. So what your role is within your organization. At the top, I'll just mention we've got finance and accounting, most confident sales, engineering, HR. Of course, these are, you might think, more vital functions um, in a cost containment environment right now. In the middle, you've got IT, healthcare services, legal. Those are kind of steady in terms of confidence in the middle. And then at the bottom, the creative functions in organizations. So uh, the, 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 the media design, Mm -hmm. graphics, even marketing functions are really where I think, you know, cost containment um, is, is, is most focused and those functions can be most vulnerable and we're seeing that reflected in the data. You know, Devin, one thing that we don't often talk about, but I hear it raised more and more is mental health. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you talk about not only the financial health of people, but their confidence, this must weigh on many, so many Americans, the short-term pain that many are feeling, all of us are feeling in terms of being inside, but also having to deal with all these stresses and strains. I think that is probably something that's really underreported and under, you know, people really don't have a good feel for that. I think people are really going through a lot that challenges them from a mental health perspective. I, I, I personally agree with you there, Jeff. I mean, we're about seven, eight weeks into this crisis and shelter in place or lockdowns in different parts of the country, depending on where you where you are. And I think even if you haven't been affected um, in your pocket or your employment status, just the change uh, in, in your environment, your personal environment, we've seen a lot of um, you know professionals on the platform talking about how that's been affecting them. Yeah. Again, notwithstanding those millions, now tens of millions who have uh, lost their jobs, that doesn't count those who are um, losing parts of their salary or you know different small benefits or, or their hours, all of that kind of stuff um, as it relates to their employer. So yeah, I, I, I think the mental health question is uh, really sharply in focus right now. And Related to what we've talked about uh, a few weeks ago with telehealth, I think services uh, like therapy, doing it over the phone, doing it uh, by video, I think there's definitely been an uptick in that. And maybe that will become permanent um, after this crisis ends, whenever that is. Yeah, uh, I know a lot of people are having a lot of sleepless nights. Devin, always a pleasure chatting with you. Th thanks so much for going over the survey and giving us your comments or at least the feedback on the platform about the FOMC meeting. And we look forward to having you back on the program again next week. Absolutely, Jeff. Take care. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest or someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the news in retirement markets, technology, personal finance, and more, check out today's edition of The Morning Pulse. We're back again tomorrow for our weekly show, BRN Weekly, where we'll have a very special guest and also take a look back at our best segments of the week. So until then, I'm Jeff Snyder, stay safe, keep on saving and don't forget, roll with the changes. Attention, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services has officially authorized new benefits that Medicare Advantage plans may include. To get the benefits you deserve, you can call the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. 
If you're on Medicare, this is important information. I called the Medicare Coverage Helpline and they instantly looked up my coverage. In this one simple call, they offered to enroll me in a plan that includes rides to medical appointments, private home aides, doctors and nurses visits by telephone, and even home delivered meals. The plan also includes dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage, all at no additional cost. Don't delay. Call to see if the new benefits are available in your area. Call the number on your screen now. It's free. Call 1-800-757-1451. That's 1-800-757-1451.